So step one is we need two bars in the same direction. You know, the first bar, uh, there's not going to be any signals, but the first bar, you know, so this down bar here, for example, sets the, you know, sets the trade direction or the signal direction here. And then um, on the second bar, then the signals are going to uh, happen in real time. When the second bar opens, we're going to take the open price and create a four tick offset. And so if when, or not if, but when, well, yeah, if and when price moves four ticks down on the second bar here, we want a signal to occur in real time, right? And, and that's simply, that's basically it. And we're just going to keep repeating this process, you know, entirely until we get a bar reversal, right? So, um, yeah, so um, as long as there is a previous bar, so, right, so if this is the signal bar here, right, so the second bar is our signal bar. So as long as there is a previous bar in the same direction, then we're going to keep generating signals here uh, as illustrated. So on this third down bar, right, the previous bar is a down bar. So, right, so that's our, basically that becomes our prerequisite down bar. And so the third bar can also generate a short signal if price moves down four ticks, you know, below the open price, right? So on and so forth until price reverses here. And so we see we have an up bar, but we can see on the next bar after the up bar, price did not move up four ticks. So there was no signal generated here. And then the second up bar here, we can see that basically, uh, well, the previous bar was a down bar. So no signal on this second green bar because the prior bar was in the opposite direction, right? So the prior bar needs to be an up bar as well in the same direction. And so then eventually we can see here all the yellow lines indicating that the bars afterward can generate a little, uh, will, will generate a trade signal as price moves upward. Right. So basically that is the concept there. That's the question in a nutshell. All right, so I have really no idea what to call this signal here. So I just <laughs> call this. So we need at least, you know, two bars in the same direction. And then we're going to signal when, you know, basically the market moves four ticks past the open here. So, all right. So the first bar, right. So we need to establish, right, the prior bar. So, right. So here, you know, it's called the first bar. But to, you know, to make this a little more uh, uniform or universal, you know, I would just call this the prior bar, right? So we need a prior bar to establish the trend direction, right? And so that's pretty darn simple. We're just going to use a bar direction, right? So the prior bar um, needs to be in the same direction as the, as the signal. So uh, let's call this, um, there we go. We'll just call it prior bar direction. And, um, you know, as we can see here, basically it's just giving us the bar direction. Now, what we need though is, right, let's take this bar for example here, right? So if, if we're going to generate, you know, a signal on this bar here, right? So, right, so this, this would definitely be our signaling bar. And so the prior bar, right, um, is an up bar. So we need to take the, right, we need to take the long output here and shift it on, forward onto the signal bar, right? So, so I guess, yeah, think of this in terms of when, when we get to the signal bar, you know, I guess think of it from that, from this point of view from the signal bar. So, <clears throat> so we need to look back one bar, 
and then take and confirm that it's an up bar. So we need to take this long output here and shift it forward onto the signal bar. Right. So to do that, we can use the start bars a go. So in, in other areas, this is actually called a displacement. So, well, it technically, uh, you know, calling this start bars go is, is more of a technical reason here. But in, in other solvers, uh, let's see here. Well, I don't, well, yeah, I'll just, we're going to need a comparison solver anyways. But in other solvers, you know, it would be the displacement function, right? So this, this start bars ago is doing the exact same function as, um, as a displacement that you might see. Also, there's a look back function node here. <clears throat> you know, so quite often with the look back node, quite often we use the displacement function within it, right? So, but, you know, the bar direction basically has a displacement built into it. Uh, but in this case, it's called, you know, start bars ago. So when this bar is forming, we're, you know, we want to, you know, start looking at the bar direction, you know, how many bars ago. And so we're going to set this to one. So that says, okay, you know, look at the bar direction one bar ago. So, all right. So, and now we can see, right? So now we can see Bloodhound's output, right? So we have the, the down bar, this down bar output now gets shifted forward onto this bar. But this up bar, right, this up bar output is now shifted onto the signal bar, right? So there you go. So that's, so this is our, you know, the prior bar here uh, established. And now we just need to do this um, comparison here. So, right, so we need to take the open price and see whether the market moves, you know, four ticks upward to generate that long signal in real time. So, so we're going to take a comparison solver to do that. See if the high or the low of the bar, or we're, we're going to compare the high or the low of the bar to the open price. All right. So again, here, right, we're going to, so obviously if the high of the bar, if the high of the bar, you know, moves up four ticks, then obviously, right, the market had moved up that four tick requirement, and that's what's required to generate a signal there. So for input A, we're going to set input A to price, and we're going to set input B to price as well. <clears throat> Let's see here. So for input A, to generate a long signal, we're using the high of the bar, right? So if the high of the bar moves up four ticks, then we know we want a signal. So we're, for the long uh, input, we want to use the high price of the bar. And for the short, for a short signal, we want to use the low of the bar, right? Now the, the uh, difference between the open price and the high or the low, we want that to be four ticks. So we're gonna put four ticks in there twice. And then input B, well, that's going to be the open price. So both for a long signal and a short signal, right? Our four tick offset is always from the open price. And I should have connected that up. There we go, let me connect that up there. Let's see here. So really, this solver here, this comparison solver, um, you know, as we can see, you know, if, if we look at the open price, you know, we can see that both the high and the low of that bar are going to be more than four ticks away from the open. So we're going to get a lot of bars, you know, where we have a long and a short at the same time, right? So that makes sense. You know, but um, when we combine these two, 
nodes together, that is going to filter our signals in the correct direction. So let's add a AND node. Like that, and then add in that right there. And so there we go. Now, um, let's back up here and let's take a look at um, this bar here. Right there. Right, so the prior bar is a down bar. But our prior bar, well, Actually, yeah, our prior bar is more than four ticks. Um, so we do need to add this prior bar, you know, minimum distance here. So let's, let's see here. There's two ways we can do this. Um, so if our prior bar, if you want the body to have a minimum four tick body, then we can just use the bar direction solver here. So we can see there's a minimum bar size. And so we can put in four ticks there. Right? This minimum bar size, because this is a bar direction, right? And the bar direction is established by the body, right? The bar direction has nothing to do with the high or the low. Right, it all has to do with the open and close. So we can see now that this minimum bar size of four ticks is setting a minimum body size of four ticks. And so the signal now disappears, right? The short signal disappeared. So, cause we can see that the body of this down bar here is not four ticks, right? So if you want to make sure that there's a body with four ticks, minimum four ticks, then you can just set the minimum bar size here to four ticks. But if we just need the entire bar length, you know, from high to low, you know, just to check the high to low, then we can grab a bar length, right? So... Uh, the bar direction, that can tell you, you know, you can use that to filter out minimum body sizes. But if you want to check the entire bar length, you know, a bar length is from high to low. So we could grab a bar length here. There we go. Put in a, a four tick bar length and then adjust our range here. So we can see it defaults to ATR. And so we can put in here ticks. We can adjust our measurement to ticks and then put in four ticks for the max and the min length here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, um, let's see, the output that we're looking for right at or above four ticks right so and that that's already uh, so that output is already set to on turned on here so that all right so if we connect this into the result node there and we can see that yeah basically all these bars here are going to be at least four ticks in length um, the NQ is pretty volatile Oh, here we go. Okay, so here's a couple of bars here um, that are short, you know, uh, three ticks or less. So there's a couple of bars, but otherwise, yeah, all these other bars are, you know, have a four tick length there. All right, so there's, yeah, so there's two ways to measure that four tick, you know, length on the prior bar. All right, so we'll leave both of those on there. Um, like so. Actually, I'll connect that in. We'll make this extra conservative here and we'll require everything. So the bar length has to be four ticks and the bar body has to be four ticks. So we'll just connect everything in there. So um, I think that does it. Yeah.
So if we kind of scan through here, right? So here's an up bar. So obviously no signal on the following bar uh, because this this was a down bar. But more importantly, from the open, we can see that the market only moved up a tick or two. So the market didn't move up high enough to generate a long signal um, on this bar. Okay. So, all right, let's let's move forward here to the live market here. Now, as mentioned, this is to generate. This is supposed to generate a signal in real time. So we have to make uh, a setting change to Bloodhound. So if we open up the indicator window, there we go. Here's the indicator window. And in Bloodhound, all right, you have to change the calculate mode here to on price changed. And so that's how we get signals to be generated on the bar that's forming, right? Is change your calculate mode to on price change or on each tick. So, so let's make that change, that adjustment there. And yeah, so we can see that price had moved down so this wick right had this wick had generated a short signal there so once this bar closes up all right so now if the market moves up four ticks uh, there we go and there is our long signal right there all right so that's that's it <clears throat> that's all we needed was you know, at, at a bare minimum, you know, we just needed uh, these two solvers here, a bar direction and then a comparison solver. So we can, you know, compare the open price to the high or the low of the bar. Okay. And that, as we can see, that will give us historical signals here. Now, if you don't care about historical signals, um, then, you know, we could do something else here, uh, right? So with this comparison solver, looking at the high of the bar um, and the low of the bar as compared to the open, right? That's what gives us these historical signals because, right, because obviously the, the high price and the low price of the bar never changes. But if we only wanted to see, you know, signals in real time, we could... Let's see here. What? There. Let me do this. All right. So basically, this AND node is set up so that it'll leave behind historical signals, right? Um, but if you only wanted to see signals in real time, then let's see, I can grab another AND node, stick in our prior bar direction solver, and then also add, I could grab a, another bar direction, connect that in, and with this bar direction, set the minimum size there to four, All right, so now this will give us signals. Let's see. Oh, yeah, actually, that's right. This does give us some historical signals. So, yeah, if the body if the body is more than four ticks, we'll get a historical signal here. But yeah, but we can see that sometimes. We're not going to get all the historical signals there. So, yeah, this actually isn't doing what I was thinking it was going to do. So, yeah, I guess this extra <laughs> way of looking at it, it's not very... I don't see any, any advantage to it. Um, yeah, because sometimes we are getting... We will get signals, you know, as said, if the body is more than four ticks. Um, you know, here, for example, a short signal would have been generated, but it wasn't left. Historically, it disappeared because, right, the open to the, or the body is less than four ticks. So historically, it disappeared, but 
in real time, there would have been a short signal there. So, yeah, I don't really see any advantage to that. So let's just, yeah, kill that. And just leave it as it is. All right. Yeah, we can see here that the body um, is not four ticks, uh, right? That body is two ticks in length, I think. So there's no signal. And again, that was because, let's see here. Let me move these back. And that's because our prior prior bar solver here, I set a four tick um, minimum there. And of course, now we can see, right, now there's a short signal because the prior bar is obviously four ticks or more. All right, so um, there we have it. I think that's basically as far as we can go um, with this question here. So let me see if there's any follow-up questions here. Yeah, all right, well, um, I don't see any follow-up questions. So I think we are done with Randy's question. <clears throat> and so tomorrow, we'll finish up tomorrow <clears throat> um, with the um, order management part of this question here. All right, so in tomorrow's Blackbird workshop, we will establish um, a profit target here, um, which is gonna be eight ticks um, away from the open price. And then also set up a stop loss somewhere as well. Um, yeah, so we'll basically um, import these signals into Blackbird and then set up the stop loss and a profit target and uh, watch this thing go.